In this video, I'm just going to overview some of the encoding settings that are available on this NVR. The encoding settings are what actually tells the NVR how you want to record the cameras that are connected to it. The encoding settings can affect how long you can store the video for and how clear the video is. So in order to get to the encoding settings, I'm first going to right click on my NVR screen here. It's going to bring up the context menu. I'm going to click the menu button here. I'm going to use the graphical user password to log in. Inside of here, it takes me directly to the camera registration page. You can see there's a second tab here called encoding. That just so happens to be where the encoding settings are. So I'm going to click on that button. Here we can see that we have the first camera selected here. We have the storage mode of main and third stream. We can see it's capturing 1440p video, which is 2K or 4 megapixel video at 25 frames per second. We can click this to change different modes between different presets. Here this is 5 megapixels at 20 frames per second. This is 4 megapixels at 25 frames per second. <clears throat> this is 3 megapixels at 30 frames per second. This is 3 megapixels at 25 frames per second. 2 megapixels at 30 frames per second and then finally 2 megapixel at 25 frames per second. These are preset capture modes that will automatically change these settings based on different optimizations. As you can see, after trying to change the capture mode, it says that it will change the encoding settings. I'm just going to click yes to see what it sets it to after changing it to 5 megapixels at 20 frames per second. So you can see here it shows the H.264 video compression. I could change that to H.265 if I want to squeeze a little more savings out of the encoding on my NVR. It changed it to the 5 megapixel resolution. It shows a constant bitrate. That constant bitrate is 6100, or a little over 6100 kilobits per second. And again, the frame rate is 20. Now, most of these settings are also capped by the certain camera you have. This certain camera happens to be a 5 megapixel camera. So the highest resolution that I can choose is 5 megapixels, and then the highest frame rate I can choose is 20 frames per second. Let's say I wanted to get a little more fluid video, then of course I could either choose the preset mode of 4 megapixels at 25 frames per second, or I could make those changes myself. So I could select the resolution, so you can see it doesn't let me do that, so I have to go to capture mode and change it to, to the 4 megapixel option. It says it's going to change my encoding settings. Now let's change it to 4 megapixel mode. It set it to H.264 with the same bitrate setting. However, now since it's down to 4 megapixels, this camera can provide 25 frames per second. Now let's try going down to 3 megapixels at 30 frames per second. It's going to say it's going to change my encoding settings. I'm going to click continue or yes to continue. It took a second to get to it, but it now has the 3 megapixel selection, a constant bit rate again. This time it squeezed it down to a 5100 kilobit rate. Here we can see we're now recording at 30 frames per second. And there's some various other toggles that we could switch here, such as image quality, smoothing. And then finally we could set up the U-code or smart codec. We could do basic or advanced. If you really want to save your video, then you're going to actually want to lower the bitrate and see how that affects your image. In this particular video, we're not going to go into the nitty gritty of optimizing your encoding settings, but this is how you would do it. You would in maximize or optimize your resolution, optimize the frame rate that you would like for the fluidity of your video or how fluid the video appears and then you would adjust your bitrate within those parameters and then look at your live view to determine if that bitrate setting will work for the parameters that you have selected. And you're usually going to want to use constant bitrate as that's going to keep the bitrate in a more um, solid window rather than a variable bitrate that will sometimes increase significantly or decrease significantly and give you various levels of image quality rather than a constant image quality. And like I mentioned previously, you could of course toggle the image quality bar here or the smoothing bar, but the point really is that you should be 
optimizing these settings and making them fit to how you want to record your camera. If your camera has an audio stream, either a built-in microphone or an external microphone, then you would of course want to enable the audio stream for each of the streams that you're using. As you saw at the top, the storage mode is set to main and third stream, so I would select the main and third stream. Now to cover the substream and third stream, basically these streams are used for network transmission. As you can see, the stream type is network transmission. These optimize the image for viewing from a smartphone or for overall clips. So let's say you wanted to record the camera in mainstream only when there was a motion event, then you would use the stream type of mainstream and the normal stream type. And then for the third stream, you wanted it to store that for continuous recording. That way you had a backup recording. If, even if motion didn't occur, you at least had some video of whatever event might have happened. And you could, of course, make some changes to your third stream. So now that I've reviewed the 3 megapixel settings, I can also see that there's another 3 megapixel setting with a 25 frame per second limit. There are also, like I mentioned previously, a 2 megapixel at 30 and 2 megapixel at 25. I won't go through all of these options, but they are here. Uh, and they certainly can be further optimized by some tuning. Back to the storage mode, we could select just mainstream, we could select just substream, we could do main and substream, do main and third stream, which seems to be the default, or we could do just the sub and third stream. The neat thing about NVRs and IP cameras is there is no limit to the amount of customization that you can do for your recording methods. For example, in our office, we like to record the substream on continuously and then we only record the mainstream on motion. I'm not going to cover that in this video. This will be in the, this process will be in another video called our recording methods video. But I hope this video has at least shed some light on how to maybe tune and modify the encoding settings on your NVR to squeeze a little bit more of storage time or to increase the quality of your video image. Thank you for watching.